Hello, this is Paul from Fossa Tech. In Chapter Three, we learned most of the differentiation rules. Now let's move to Chapter Four. We do applications of differentiation. We will discuss many important applications, as you can see from the outer line. In this video, we are going to deal with the first application, which is to find the the absolute extreme value. Of a function, which is important in optimization problems, as a seed material. And the first,、uh, I will introduce two theory: extreme value theory and the Fermat theory. Next,、uh, I will introduce a guideline for finding absolute、uh, extreme values based on the theorems. Then、uh, we will. Practice one question together about how to use the cut line to find the absolute extreme value. And let's see. Here is the first. We're going to define what is, what is extreme value. Okay. And、uh, suppose we have a function. You can see this is the graph of the function. And、uh, we look at this. And at this point is the highest point, which means、uh, the function has the maximum value. This is the highest among all, so we call the absolute maximum, which means f d is the absolute maximum value of the function. The same we look at this point. So this point has the lowest value, and which means we call the f a is the absolute minimum. Why we call the absolute? Because that's global. Okay, so we have a local. Can you see? Look at this point. And this point that looks is a、uh, maximum, but it's just、uh, around the neighborhood of B, which means、uh, to this small range we can see this is the maximum, but not a global. It's a local. We call the local maximum. Okay, the same we have a local minimum here, right? So this is the extreme value. Our purpose is going to find the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum in this topic. Now we need the two theorems. Let me go to see. Here is the first theorem. We call the extreme value theorem. Okay, what does this theorem mean? Let's see. If a function f is continuous on A B, I highlighted these two conditions. Okay, and the continuous is the first one, and the closed interval closed. Okay, include the A, include the B. This is the domain. What we are considering, okay, the, these two conditions. Then, the function f attains an absolute maximum value of、uh, f c, which means at a c, we have a c point the c or number c between a b f at a c reach to the absolute maximum, and the the same we will reach to the absolute minimum at a d. Um, so. And、uh, we were not going to prove the theorem. Okay, so we need uh, uh, more knowledge other than calculus. Okay, so we need uh, like uh, mathematical analysis or real analysis, or other topics. Okay, but、uh, I was going to show you what does this mean. So first, the two condition is the most important. So we has to be this is necessary. Okay, so should it be for the function continues on closed interval. And、uh, look at this example. The first, if a function is not a continuous, what do we have? We will have a, we probably will have a not extreme value theorem. Okay, so why extreme value? For example, this function is not a continuous at one. Okay, so we look at it. This is a, a gap, right? A jump. Okay, can we reach to the maximum value of this function? No. Look at the maximum value is goes to like a three, but the function cannot.、Uh, the value of the function cannot reach a three. This is an empty circle. Can you see? And therefore, if it's not a continuous, usually we will not reach to,、uh, to extreme value. So continuous is the most important. We have the second, is closed interval, and、uh, can we see this example? I give you a function. But the domain we are considering is zero to two. Does not include the zero. Does not include the two. Okay, so look at this is a not closed interval. 
Okay, this time uh, our function cannot reach to a maximum value. Why? See, the function goes up into infinity. We do not have uh, absolute maximum value, right? But look at the minimum. See, the function goes down, down to one. However, we cannot uh, reach one because this is a uh, empty. Right, this is an empty circle, which means if the function, if the domain is not a closed interval, usually we will not find the maximum, okay, or the minimum. So keep in mind that these two are necessary condition. Okay, so um, look at the third example. If we consider a function is continuous and the domain is also closed, this time definitely can you see? You can imagine, and the, the left end point closed fixed the right end point fixed okay the middle curve is just like a, a string no matter how high or how low definitely you can find at the top right you can bound the graphs because what because the function is continuous okay and therefore you find at the highest point so we can reach the function reach to the absolute uh, uh, maximum value okay the lowest the point can you see here the function will reach to the lowest or the absolute minimum value okay that doesn't make sense in other words okay and that is because dream value tell us uh, if the function is continuous on a closed interval the range of the function is a closed interval from the global minimum to the global maximum Okay, that doesn't make sense. Okay, um, why we need this theorem? So, because we have this theorem, so we know we have a uh, absolute maximum and uh, uh, absolute minimum. That's why we need to find, right? If we don't have, uh, how to find? So this time uh, we're going to find. We have a very important theorem. We call the famous theorem. Can you see? Okay, so here we call the famous theorem. Uh, what does this theory mean? What is FIAMA? Okay, so everyone, if you go into Google to search, FIAMA, FIAMA, FIAMA is a very famous mathematician, uh, a little bit earlier than Isaac Newton, who also made a great contribution to the development, development of calculus, okay? Uh, what does the theory If F is, a, if the function F has a local maximum, Excuse me. Or local minimum value at uh, number C, for example, right here. Can you see? And the, the function uh, reaches to the maximum or reaches to the minimum at uh, a number. And uh, if the derivative of the function at this point exists, and the firm give us the derivative should be zero. Um, why? When I mean, you just uh, look at this graph, it's very easy to get the concept. Can you see? And they did the, the highest, right? But look at the, what's the tangent line. If you're going to draw tangent line, should it be horizontal, which means the derivative is zero. That doesn't make sense. Okay, or look at the minimum. If you draw a tangent line, look at it's also horizontal. Therefore, the derivative is zero. Okay, so it's very easy. It looks obvious. Um, but we also can give another proof, okay? Ex exact the proof. If the function reaches to a maximum or minimum, this does not mean the uh, absolute maximum, okay? No matter what, is local minimum or local maximum is okay. And if the derivative exists, the derivative should be equal to zero. Okay, we can prove this and they use a very simple way. Okay, can you see? And the first, uh, the derivative, uh, we use the definition, right? But uh, the limit, the limited definition of a derivative, but we only use the left-handed limit. What does it mean? Because the limit exists, so the left-handed limit exists. We also have a definition. This we call the what? The left-handed derivative. Okay, the left-handed derivative, which means the left. Can you see? And this point to the left. If we're going to look at the um, the slope of the second line, can you see? If we look at the local maximum, which means this point C, and I look at the left-handed uh, derivative, 
definitely is greater than zero, right? Because the function goes up. So the slope of the second line greater than zero. Uh, of course, if you like you, I can show you from these mathematics. It also can show us is greater than zero. Because of what? Because of easy. Okay. Can you see this is a fraction? And this fraction, the bottom is negative, right? Because h is less than zero. How about the numerator at the top? Fc is the maximum. Therefore, this is also negative. So you can see, okay, which is negative over negative. A negative over negative is greater than zero, right? Good. This is the first. The same, we can look at uh, the right handed divider. Okay, if the graph tells us it goes down, which means uh, the slope of the second line is less than zero. And this is what it says. Okay, we use the left handed limit. Uh, if we look at the sign of the numerator, the denominator is the same. Can you see? Now the denominator is what? H is uh, greater than zero, right? Okay, the top is less than zero, so yeah, because fc is the maximum. Okay, so negative over positive is negative. Can we get it? Okay, what do we get? We get the derivative greater than or equal to zero. The derivative less than or equal to zero. So what is the derivative? Has to be zero, right? This is the proof. Super easy to get uh, the result. Um, we only proved the local maximum. So how about the, the local minimum? You see it's the same situation, okay? So you can use the similar way, okay? So we say is a similar. It's similar for the local minimum, okay? You can prove this by yourself. It's super easy. Now we have Fermat's theorem, okay? Fermat theorem so help us to to find where is where is the the local minimum or the local maximum, we look at the derivative equal zero. How about if the derivative does not equal zero? Probably okay. So you can imagine if we have like an absolute value function, can you look at the bottom? Is not a differentiable, right? Which means the derivative does not exist, but it does exactly the minimum. Which means Fermat's theorem only tell us if the derivative exists. Okay, the derivative should be equal to zero. If the derivative does not exist, it's probably okay, is the same. Probably is a local minimum or local maximum. We have to take a consideration. Um, now we put these two theorems together. We can find a guideline. But before the guideline, okay, so this kind of C derivative equal to zero is important. Uh, we call the critical number. So we give a definition. And if number C is the derivative equal zero, or the derivative does not exist, does not exist, this kind of number we call the critical number. You know, here, this is very important. Why this is important? So I highlighted the critical number. Why critical number is important? That because can you see here, we have a, a alternative version for Fermat's theory now. Okay. If the function has a local maximum or minimum value, then C is a critical number. Why? Because Fermat's theorem tells us if derivative exists is zero. See, is zero is critical. Another way is if the derivative does not exist, we just say okay, so probably is also a candidate. At this is a candidate of of a local maximum or minimum. So we put it together. So we call the water. Okay, we call it the local minimum value or extreme value. It should be taken at a critical number. If we define this is the critical number, and uh, if we put this definition together, now we have a, a guideline for us to find what is the um, global minimum or global maximum value. Can you imagine? We we'll put these two theorems together. Of course, the first theorem you imagine is extreme value. So extreme value tell us there is a global maximum or minimum value first, right? And then the second is a, a Fermat's theorem tell us how to find 
how to find. Of course, we need to find all the local extreme value first, right? Find all the local extreme. Let me go back a little bit. Go back to the first. Can you see here? How do you find the local maximum? Of course, we need to find all the local. Ma how to find the global maximum? We need to find all the local maximum value. The absolute maximum, of course, is also a local maximum, right? Find all the local maximum from this local maximum. Pick the greatest one is the absolute ma maximum. Does that make sense? The same, and we find all the local. See, this one local, two local, and the three local minimal. Among these three, the minimal value is the absolute minimum, and therefore all we need is find all these local value first, local extreme value first, and then to to compare among that that values to find the maximum and find the minimum. This is all. Let me go back. If you find it, this is the guideline, okay? So now we put it together. We have three steps. The first two steps find all the local extreme value. The last step just pick the maximum and the minimum. So we find the absolute extreme values. So how do you find the local user uh, theorem's theory? Find a critical number first because of what? The theorem's theorem tells us the local extreme value should be at critical numbers so we need to find the critical number first and then find the y value or evaluate the function at the critical numbers uh, you will say the end points why we have because you know end points you can say is a critical number because we cannot define the derivative or we just put here separate them okay find all the critical number and then consider the end points because probably the extreme value is also at the end points Okay, so three steps. Now let's move to uh, one question. Okay, so we just practice one question together. How do you find the absolute dream value? We exactly follow these three steps. Find the critical value first, critical number. You can say critical number first. Evaluate the function at these critical numbers and at the end point, and then to pick the maximum and the minimum. And it is super easy to follow. Okay, this is the card nine. Now here the question. And uh, first, uh, let's look at it. Do we have? A, is there a extreme value number there, or uh, uh, or absolute extreme value? Can you see this is a continuous function, and this domain is uh, what we consider domain is. Uh, Close the interval. So the first extreme value give us there is at least one maximal, global maximal, global minimal, right? So how do you find it? Follow step A, B, and the C, right? Find the critical first, critical number first, evaluate the function at the critical number and then the points, and then to find it, to pick, just to pick the maximum, the minimum. The three uh, three steps we just uh, do follow. Okay, so the first step uh, is find the critical numbers. Uh, what is a critical number? Either derivative equals zero, or derivative does not exist. Right? Let me going to find the derivative first. Derivative function first. It's very easy to to find the derivative function. See, can you see what is the derivative function? Which means this f prime. This is the derivative function equals what? Five uh, take a derivative zero. This is a fifty-four, and this is a power function. So you know, is zero plus fifty-four. I double put the fifty-four minus six uh, x squared. This is a derivative function, which means what? And that this polynomial is derivative at all the points. So we do not have a point there. We do not have that type of uh, critical number, and uh, the derivative does not exist, right? Okay, so what is the critical number? Derivative equals zero. So I have to put this equals zero. Now, as of this equation, everyone know how to solve the equation, right? 
this quadratic equation, let me solve. So I get x square equals 9, because 6 times 9 equals 54. And then I get two solutions, is uh, uh, positive or negative 3, don't miss the negative. Okay, so hey, we have a 2, look, it's a 2 critical number. No, it's not a 2, it's only 1. Why? Because our domain is 0 to 4. Negative 3 is not between 0 and 4. We can just point out uh, we do not need to consider negative 3. Negative 3 uh, does not belong to 0 and 4, right? Okay, so what? So we find a 1 only. So the only critical number, okay? The only critical number you find is what? You find it is a 3. Now what do we do? This is the first step. We already find the critical number 3. Uh, do you remember the second step? Find all the y values at the critical number and the endpoints. Okay, the second step is find the evaluate all the y value at the critical number. Let me copy a little bit to here. Well, how many critical numbers? Only one. Okay, which is three. And uh, what is the end point? Can you see end point is zero and four, right? Let me just uh, put here. Is one is zero and four is the another. So we have to evaluate the function at these three points. Okay, you know how to evaluate. Let me copy the function first. So uh, is this? Let me copy the function which means uh, evaluate f, okay, this is the number, equals the function is 5 plus 54 times the x, and then minus 2 times the x raised to the third power, okay. So here the function, so I copy it. Now we can do this. I just uh, plug the value. Uh, let me evaluate the 3, so 3 per here, and the three put there, okay? So now you use your calculator or do calculation directly. So what do we get? You can see we can get 113. Now it's the same for the second step. Let me copy, here is the function. Okay, and then minus two raised to the third power. We evaluated the function at zero. So we put a zero here and a zero here, very easy to see what do we get. We can get a 5, right? So easy to find it is 5. Okay, let me put it here, it's a 5. And the last uh, evaluation is at a 4. You can do the same, okay? You can do the same way. See, is the third power. What do we get? Uh, you can go to evaluate this uh, function. I get uh, 93. So this is the second step. So we evaluate all the y value at these three points. So we have a three value. Do you remember Fermi's theorem tell us the global, uh, we have a guideline. The guideline tell us the global should be between these three and the global minimum also should be between these three. So we pick the highest, which is uh, 113. That's the global maximum value. Okay, let me write down. So our global or app absolute maximum value this time is f at three equals one hundred thirteen. The same. What is the app absolute minimum value? Uh, the minimum value. Let me see. Is how many? Of course, it's five, right? And uh, which means uh, when x equals zero, f zero equals five. This is the absolute minimal value. That's the questions. Thank you. That's all. I hope you enjoy uh, learning on this topic. If you have any question, please leave your comment. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for your support. Please don't forget, you are very welcome to subscribe to my channel for more videos. In the next video, let's see here. We are going to 
deal with the mean value theorem, which allows us to obtain information about a function just from its derivatives. Hope to see you there. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.